Um, I believe that there is an important proposal here, Islamic finance, in, and it has done fantastic over the 30, 40 years. Um, but there are difficulties, and uh, an important part of that difficulty, I consider the substance issue, which uh, distinguishes Islamic finance, in my view, from the conventional finance. In other words, the Islamicness, the prefix Islamic, suggests something different. And that difference lies mainly, in my understanding, in the substance rather than the form. Because form, one way or another, it can be overcome easily as an issue. And contractual nature has, anyway, over the years, converged terribly to conventional financial ins instruments. And therefore, bringing out or making a difference can only be possible with the substance-related issues. And perhaps that is one of the reasons that the conventional finance, unfortunately, has come to this end. And therefore, looking at the Islamic finance industry uh, from that humble beginning, as Richard went through as well in the UK experience, a fantastic development over the years. And it is a real, real proposi proposition. It has been successful in terms of the growth-related issues. And it has proved itself to be a viable proposition. But when we look at the current state, in particular considering the uh, financial crisis, there are, there are issues, issues that, uh, as mentioned that as well, the divergence between the aspirations of Islamic moral economy as opposed to the realities of Islamic finance. And Islamic finance realities does not seem to share those aspirations, how substance can be part of the part and the parcel of the entire process. And which I consider this as a social failure, a social failure related to substance. And the whole discussion, therefore, in the current years that we are having, whether Islam-based financing versus the Sharia-compliant financing directly refers to the root of the issue that the substance, one way or another, has been ignored due to certain reasons in the process. And it is important, therefore, to bring it to the, uh, to the agenda. To share with you a photograph from the Wall Street protesters, as you can see, a lady uh, carrying a blanket and saying, let's bank the Muslim way. In my understanding, that call for banking with the Muslim way is directly refers to the substance-related issues. Because if it is only contractual issue, or if it is the form issue, that anyway, conventional finance, one way or another, has provided that. And therefore, in order to be able to respond to such calls, and not to disappoint people like the lady in the picture, the substance-related issues has to come to fore. In other words, the alternativeness of Islamic finance is and only can be revealed, in my view, with the substance-related issues. And therefore, the essentialization of Islamic moral economy, or as Richard mentioned, Islamic economic system, is the essential part and the parcel of the process, so that the Islamic finance can contribute to the development uh, of the societies, communities, and countries. The growth is there. Growing economies is there. Growing Islamic finance is there. But how we can translate that growth into development, that is an issue directly related to substance-related matters. And when we talk about substance, of course, the important issue, what is substance, by the way? We haven't been able to define <laughs> the substance as well. When we say substance, what do we mean? What what is the content of this substance? And when we look at the substance, of course, we, we see that uh, the whole discourse of Islamic moral economy start mainly in the um, late 1960s with the uh, new Muslim nation states trying to find an identity, and hence uh, a reference to socially construct an Islamic model of economics and uh, economy in general. And when we look at the initial writings, therefore, uh, the entire discourse, one way uh, or another, was on the substance-related issues. In other words, how we can get these economies to develop, how we can achieve economic development, how we can achieve human development. That was the concern around which 
the whole discourse started. I mean, if you look at the literature 60s and 70s, you would immediately see that. However, with the globalization of Islamic finance with the uh, 1990s, unfortunately, such uh, literature has stopped, uh, and we hardly see any writing on Islamic moral economy related matters. And therefore, the whole objective was to uh, respond to the failure of economic development, human centric development, to develop something new with an authentic understanding how economic development could be achieved with human-centric development strategies as the ideal of Islamic developmentalism. And within that process, of course, creation of an Islamic paradigm of economics with its distinct, distinct values, norms, rules, and institutions uh, to directly refer to the substance, therefore. Uh, and hence, the, in the initial writing, Islamic financing was the part of the story, not Islamic financial system. And therefore, the distinction between financialization and financing is an important part of the discourse. And Islamic moral economy, of course, at the same time, in addition to institutionalization and looking at the roots of the developmentalist problem and responding to those problems, aimed at, of course, um, shaping the behavioral norms of individuals at the same time. Yes, supply and the demand have to go together. The individuals and the institutions should have behaved as uh, within the norms and the values of Islam as identified by Islamic moral economy. And therefore, pushing all the blame to Islamic banks and financial institutions perhaps is not the right solution either. Individuals as we are, as customers of these banks and financial institutions, have not either changed our position in terms of our finance and the uh, uh, consumption patterns or the investment patterns or our expectation from uh, returns and etc. Those are important issues in terms of the in terms of shaping the natures and the operations of banking and financial institutions. And looking at the further the substance where the substance comes from, when we look at the substance in particular the discourse seventies managed to bring together certain axioms through which it define the nature of the substance. And substance, when we look at within these axioms, directly refer to the social dimensions of development rather than just economic development or the financialization of the economy. One way or another, you see the uh, vertical uh, dimension of ethicality as expressed and then the horizontal equality, again, referring to the equality of individuals, and hence accessibility to resources in an equal manner. The growth, the nature of growth, individual level, social level, environmental level, enabled individual, society, and natural environment to create that process of uh, substance uh, mm, through the perfection. As, uh, as mentioned as well, the Ihsan, as you can see in the IIBI poster, the, the definition of Ihsan in the process, uh, the ethicality, uh, excellence in ethicality, but at the same time, social responsibility in individual level as well as in organizational level. The, the whole objective of overcoming the conflict between individual and the social good, and hence, uh, using the resources and the institutions available uh, to overcome that resource at the same time, returning the right of the society to society, and hence uh, maximizing the social interest at the same time uh, in line with the individual and institutional interest. And then providing the framework within which this can be achieved uh, with the objective of or the Makassid al-Sharia, the objective of Sharia being the human well-being. Whatever the action that we have, whatever we do, the whole objective was human well-being. So when the Makassid is defined as human well-being, entirely as social conceptions, and when we define Islamic banks and financial institutions working within the Makassid, and therefore we can easily see the difficulty in the process. Form uh, does not necessarily maximize the social return or the human well-being, maximization of the welfare of the human well-being, but rather works in the interest and a very pragmatistic manner in the uh, profit maximization in neoclassical terms. And this is the issue for us. Uh, the Islamic banks and financial institutions very much shifted the paradigm and moved to the neoclassical paradigm of efficiency as opposed to the Islamic moral economy position of maximizing the um, 
uh, maximizing uh, social or optimizing the resources according to so social and economic efficiency. So social efficiency of the optimality is an important part and parcel of the process. And it's a terribly, uh, of course, detailed discussion, but I'm not be able to go into, into such detail, but just to summarize Using Ibn Khaldun, for instance, from the uh, 15th century, perhaps can give us an understanding when he referred that uh, sustainability is essential and therefore the wealth has to be created. So Islamic position with wealth is clearly identified. There is no problem in that process. And wealth cannot be acquired except through development, and hence importance of economic and the finance, financing related activities. And development, however, would identify it has to go through with justice. Social justice is the essential through which development can be achieved. And identifying that through only this justice that human beings are be, to be evaluated uh, by God in the hereafter as an important, but always referring to the uh, justice and the social justice in economic and finance, financing matters is an, is an essential part of uh, Islamic moral economy. Therefore, when we look at um, the whole summary of Islamic moral economy tells us that what we have here in uh, the objectives, the economic and sustainable development, social justice in individual and organizational level, as well, therefore, the social investing oriented principles, which can deliver the sustainable development is an important part of the process. And therefore, the human centeredness uh, referring to the human well-beingness is an important part in terms of developing the functioning individuals. Uh, because the whole problem, therefore, how we can get individuals to be stakeholders in the process. And that refers to the functioning individuals, uh, as well as creating the right and just environment and opportunity spaces for such developments to take place. In other words, how we can get banks and financial institutions, for that matter, Islamic banks and financial institutions, uh, to create such an opportunity, uh, contribute to such an environment so that they uh, functioning individuals uh, can be developed in the process. And therefore, the Islamic financing uh, theoretically imposed the role of generating the wealth, generating the resources, pooling the resources uh, to provide such a, uh, an environment, an opportunity space. And in this, uh, financing was the reference point in other words, the real economy, directly relating to the real economy versus the financialization of the economy, which was considered as the main problem of the conventional financial system. And ethicality, therefore, in this process, uh, cannot be relegated only the prohibition of riba. Riba is only a technical matter. But what the consequences that we are looking for what we are aiming at to develop, that's the major issue and hence definition of substance. Uh, riba is only a technical matter. And it, with riba, removal of riba does not produce an ethical outcome. Uh, the ethical outcome goes beyond that directly internalization of integrating the moral objective and developmentalist objectives within the objective functions of banks and financial institutions. And therefore, the Islamic financing uh, should not only be shaped by the rules or the fuq rules, which looks at the technicality, but at the same time, moral values, the ethical expectations, the substance-related issues. And the substance, therefore, is determined as a larger concept uh, beyond the uh, prohibition of interest, but, but human development uh, as well as the social development. And therefore, looking at the Islamic finance and its principle, in addition to the usual principles, which I'm not going to go through because all of us know, but importantly, at the same time, the real economy nature as well as Islamic banking directly serving the societies rather than the market is an important issue. Of course, this, is, this, is, this has been the major issue because Islamic finance, one, one way or another over the years, has respond to the markets, markets demand, rather than the um, you know, bottom-up process, it has been top-down process. And that, uh, that perhaps is one of the reasons that we have this debate between substance uh, over the form. Uh, because if it was bottom-up process, 
and perhaps the, uh, the difficulties that we have today in terms of forms and substance perhaps would not have been that difficult. However, because the development has been directly market determined, has been an issue. Therefore, market, of course, has not responded to demands of individuals in a society. And hence, uh, the usual charts, as you know, so I'm not going to explain that, but in the usual charts, chart, one important thing is missing in telling us what the Sharia filter is there. The Sharia filter, therefore, has to internalize the top part, the green part, the moral screening process. In other words, when we look at the development of uh, financial products and instruments, the consequentialist approach is essential to, to, to endogenize the moral uh, expectation or the substance-related expectations. Moral process, therefore, through endogenizing substance-related issues has to be in a consequentialist approach, has to be internalized in the process <laughs> so that we can overcome the conflict between substance and uh, form. And therefore, the definition of objectives are important, what objectives the banks and financial institutions have to serve. Again, my reference in that would be the Islamicness, the, the whole prefix Islamic, <coughs> what does it imply? What is the uh, consequences of that Islamic having an Islamic in Islamic banking is an important issue. Therefore, the, the outcome has to, in addition to other outcomes we have in the process, uh, financing solutions aiming at capacity building and empowerment of individuals and society, social, human, and economic development, in addition to profit maximization of the financial institution. In other words, the optimality, optimality between financial outcome as well as the social outcome is the direct consequences of substance that we are talking within uh, Islamic moral economy. Therefore, internalization of corporate social responsibility, corporate governance related issues, uh, not profits at any cost is an important issue. In other words, an Islamic bank and financial institution involving in the financing of a particular project, uh, whether the social outcomes taken into account, those are we have done in the good old years. We used to have cost-benefit analysis, looking at long-term projects, how we evaluate those projects. In the evaluation, uh, we were told that the social aspect is an important to consider and to internalize in the accounting system of these projects. However, whether this is the case is an important issue to consider. In other words, if you receive a project like Zamzam Towers in Mecca, whether you would go directly to finance that because you think that it's profitable, or whether you would consider that financing Zamzam Tower undermines the whole environment, the historicity, the spirituality of the place, and therefore Islamic finance should not involve in that process. Because I'm sure that any conventional banks would have withdrawn, any Western conventional bank uh, would not consider financing such a, such a building in Mecca, for instance. So these are important issues to consider. Uh, and therefore, uh, when we look at the uh, Islamic bank and the financial institution, of course, in the, in the root, in the essence, the developmentalist aim which constitutes the substance as the essential part of the Islamic moral economy. Therefore, Islamic banks and financial institutions can fulfill the moral economy objectives direct through direct investment, uh, participation investments, equity-based structures, ethical underpinnings, but, uh, and contributing economic, social, and human development by returning the right of the society to society and by engaging with projects which increase social return in the process as well. And therefore, historically, um, the whole idea of the connectivity with the real economy has to be established, and therefore the further financialization of Islamic banks and financial institutions is a huge concern that we, has, we have to be concerned with, considering the uh, sources and the reasons of the, uh, the financial crisis that we have. And therefore, when we look at Islamic finance in essence, as considered by Islamic moral economy, to a substance understanding is very much related to uh, development-related issues. Uh, however, in the Islamic finance, in its current structure, has not been able to affect, nor it aimed at affecting the economic development issues. Of course, economic growth has been achieved. No one can, uh, can deny that. And any empirical study will show us that uh, Islamic banks has been contributing to economic growth in Malaysia, Gulf, and in other places. 
But the issue is how that is translated into economic development, which is a larger concept, whether that is happening or not. In a very simple study that I conducted, looking at the correlation between um, human development index and the uh, asset base of Islamic banks and financial institutions in a number of countries, we couldn't establish any correlation between the two. And this is, of course, an important concern to look into issues. E economic growth, of course, it is achieved. So therefore, um, with going back to the whole issue to the value system beyond the conventional banking understanding, and that is the banking aiming to fulfill the makasi, the objectives serving to the larger objectives as identified through the values and the norms of Islam as opposed to the financialization is an important issue. Therefore, what we see today and a, a, a divergence between Ethiopia of Islamic moral economy and the realities of Islamic finance. In this alternative system, understanding Islamic finance in origin was assigned an important role uh, to contribute to the economic development with the objective of human well-being and the social justice. Uh, but of course, um, and as we can see, the initial experience in 1960s, for instance, the small bank in Egypt, Midgam, as well as the Malaysian experience with Kabun Kaj is very much social investment, social banking, uh, expanding the, um, uh, the productivity base of society as it was in the case of Midgam. However, with the internationalization of Islamic banks, a very pragmatic attitude, uh, looking into how the market demands can be justified through the food process, rather than Islamic morals determining what kind of products perhaps we need, it has become an important issue. Therefore, the commercial Islamic banks and financial institutions has not fulfilled the developmentalist ex expectations, and therefore, the, uh, uh, what we talk about the social failure. When we look at this social failure, as I mentioned, locating Islamic banking objectives within their classical uh, financial objective function has been one of the major problems. Neoclassical economy refers to efficiency, while Islamic moral economy refers to optimality in social as well as the financial dimension of the paradigm. At the same time, of course, an important issue, the failure perhaps in the food process. The food, by definition, is very legalistic, very rational method, very mechanistic method, and looks at whether A is selling to B, B is selling to 2 is halal, or how it can be made halal, rather than internalizing at the same time in the objective function the substance-related issues by looking at the consequences of those financial instruments. And therefore, this legalistic, rational method, one way, has, one way or another, has to expand to endogenize the substance-related issues in the objective function. And again, the definition was made earlier to Makassid uh, in terms of the Ghazali imposition, but importantly as well, again, perhaps there's a problem there as well. The Ghazali in Makassid defines the expectations only in terms of protection. It's not proactive, it's protecting. But at the same time, of course, it limits it with five items. And again, there was a reference to Ibn Qayyim, however, perhaps referring to Ibn Qayyim, and looking into realities what we have today and what policies we can determine to respond through the Makassid to the problems that we have, perhaps unlimited nature of Makassid as defined by Ibn Qayyim can be a position. Therefore, limiting with the Ghazalian position, perhaps, again, one of the sources of the problems that we have. And commercialization, of course, commercial Islamic bank and financial institution. Uh, why uh, com commercial Islamic banking as a form? Again, when I inquired, for instance, with the founding fathers, why commercial Islamic banking considered as an, as an option? The position was that commercial Islamic banks were considered as a short-term solution. Because I was told during those years, you are talking about early 1970s, you couldn't convince any government of any Muslim, uh, any Muslim uh, country in the Muslim world to adopt an alternative banking system as based on the aspirations of Islamic moral <coughs> economy. But unfortunately, that short-term option of having commercial Islamic banks have become a long-term issue for us. And that is something that we have to consider. Uh, but importantly, of course, um, Islamic finance perhaps had to be um, uh, pragmatic in the process because the Islamic moral economy 
has not been able to develop a system as it was referred before to respond or to formulate or theorize how Islamic financing can be conducted through Islamic moral economy. This is an important issue as well. But importantly, yet finishing, but importantly, the observed inconsistency between aims, aim as Islamic moral economy defined and social and economic development, but the tools or instrument, that is commercial Islamic bank, we have inconsistency between therefore aims and the instruments and tool in overcoming that. So at this junction, we have this reality in front of us. And therefore, correcting the failure, social failure of Islamic banking, or how we can moderate the consequences of Islamic banks and financial institutions to deliver, to respond to the substance related issues is an important part uh, of our endeavor. And therefore, perhaps a, a new institutionalization, in addition to commercial Islamic banks, but other forms of uh, non banking financial institutions, perhaps could be constructed through Islamic moral economy, and again, in, in relation to the form-related issues, so that we can deliver the expectation uh, in relation to social objective as well. And therefore, endogenizing ethics uh, can perhaps provide a new identity based on substance, substantive and ethical religious tenets. Therefore, reorienting towards social banking or the, uh, or the moral, uh, moral uh, endogenizing the moral aspect of Islamic banking, the Islamic and Islamic finance should relate to the social and economic ends and financial uh, ends of financial transactions rather than the contract mechanism through which financial ends are achieved. And that is perhaps a new stage that we are, and perhaps we have to consider alternative ways of looking at the uh, reality that we have in front of us. And with that, I stop. Thank you very much. Thank you.